What kind of person are you? Do you consider yourself as a man or a woman of integrity and high morals? Do you consider yourself guilty at times? Do you feel like you've been guilty and you are convicted of some sort of sin that you've done in the past that you can't get over that and you're doing everything you can to clear that past, to wash it away, to wipe it away. But you just can't. You're trying your best, but you can't clear that history. Or do you feel you're the best of the bunch and in your circle you're the best person there is? You might be the best person in your profession. You might be the best person in your trades. And it might well be true. However, all that is according to man's standard. All this is according to your standard. That is how we choose our friends. We choose our circle of friends and network. We see somebody who is matching with our own criteria, with our own standards, and we just think, oh, that guy is a nice chap. Or that woman is a nice woman. And all that is because of our own perceptions and our ideas and our own standards. According to our own standards, we judge others and we filter people out and filter people in. We try to find people of our own likeness, of our own mindset, and that is how we choose them. Because our standard says, this guy is good, that guy is bad. This type of thing is good, that type of thing is bad. We have our own principles. Everybody has their own principles. But God has set his own principles. His standards are not our standards. His standard of morality is Jesus Christ. He showed us in the life of Jesus Christ. As an example, he didn't just give us a set of rules to abide by, but he sent his own son to be an example for us, for our everyday life, a practical example. You're not watching this video by chance. You've either been directed by friends or family, or you've been directly guided by God himself to this video. Take this as a God-given message and listen to the message all the way through. Because I'm going to take you through the salvation journey, through the scriptures. I'd like you to think about yourself a little bit and think and judge yourself. Jesus was the only person on this planet who never sinned. We've all sinned. One way or the other, at one point or the other, we have all sinned. Now this is what I want you to do in your own quiet moments. I want you to think, although you've been kind and good and person of integrity, would you fulfill the criteria of God's standard? Would you say you've lived up to the standard of Jesus? I'm not here to condemn you. I don't know you. Like I said, you've either been directed to this video by a person, by a family or a friend, or directed to this video directly by God himself. Take this as an opportunity to just spend a few moments with yourself and judge yourselves. The scripture says, judge yourselves first. Don't let others judge you, so judge yourself so you're not judged by others. Now, I want to take you through what I call 
the salvation journey through the scriptures. The scripture says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We just went through that. It's all right to say, oh, if I was at Jesus' time, I would be Peter, I would be John, I would be sitting next to him, I would even go to the cross with him. In fact, Peter actually said that. He said, I would go to the cross with you. But what he did, he denied Jesus three times before the cock crowed, as Jesus predicted and told him. We are all the same. All his disciples went about their own business after Jesus died. It was only after he came back and he rose from the dead that they had such conviction that they threw away all their business and went about preaching the gospel. And they had no fear of persecution or anything else, even death, imprisonment, nothing frightened them because they had such convictions. Now, it's all right to say, I would be this, I would do that. In fact, teachers of the law and Pharisees said, and Jesus condemned them, because they were talking about prophets before them, that they were killed and persecuted. They were saying that we wouldn't do this. See what Jesus said to them. In Matthew 23, Verses 29 to 32, Jesus says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, If we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding of the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors started. We are doing the same thing if we say that if we lived in Jesus' time, we would be even Jesus. We would be John. We would be Peter. We would do this. We would be better than Peter. We would be better than John. We would be better than all those disciples that he had. He had rotten dis disciples. If we say that, we are condemning ourselves. Think about this. Why don't we ever think? If we were in Jesus' time, maybe I would have been Barabbas. Maybe you would have been Barabbas. Barabbas was a notorious murderer who was in prison. At the same time when Jesus was arrested, he was in prison. And he was condemned to death. But people decided that he should be released. Instead, Jesus be crucified. Now think about that. Jesus took the place of a notorious murderer and died a horrific death on the cross for his sins. For that murderer's sins. Jesus had never done a single wrong to anyone, had never sinned, although tempted, but he never sinned. The only person on earth who never sinned. All those prophets before him, they all failed and fell short of the glory of God. At one point or the other, because the scriptures said so. And we know we're all human and we all fall short of the glory of God. We all sin. But Jesus didn't do that. But he took the place of the murderer and died for him. Now, is he not taking the place of you in your life? He's died for you. He's died for me. If we only accept that. If we only receive that. Because... Without the shedding of the blood, there is no redemption according to God's law. God set that law there and brought Jesus to fulfill that law, that requirement. 
because Jesus died and the shedding of his blood was an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We are Barabbases. You are a Barabbas. I am a Barabbas. Have you seen that film? I am Spartacus. No, I am Spartacus. And everybody says, oh, we are Spartacus. No, you are Barabbas. I am Barabbas. Everybody is Barabbas. We are all Barabbases. We've all been guilty at one point or the other. Let me take you through the salvation journey through the scriptures. I call this salvation journey. The first part, which we read, I read again. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, this is another scripture. Therefore, as sin entered into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death passed to all men, because, because all sinned. This is talking about the original sin that came from Adam, on top of all the sins that we've committed, and we've corrupted and convoluted this world, and made this world so messy and chaotic because of our sins. On top of that, originally, we inherited a sin from our forefathers, from Adam. He disobeyed God's only law at the time and sinned. And because of that, he lost touch with God in the sense that he had, he, he, he lost his presence. And that sin has been passed on to us from father to child, generation after generation, and we have inherited that original sin. By nature, we have that uh, tendency to sin. We're inclined towards sin until you're saved. And by, by that, I mean to receiving salvation through Christ, which I'll explain. So first, we received sin and the punishment of sin because of Adam's sin that was passed down to us generation after generation, which is why, if you notice, even children, they know good and evil without nobody teaching them. They know that. Because Adam ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, which was the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, good and bad. With that, they had that knowledge and that knowledge has been passed on to us. Now we exercise the evil more than the good uh, by nature. James chapter 2 verse 10 says, For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. In the world we're living, how the societies and governments look at guilt is that you're innocent until proven guilty. Whereas God says the opposite. You're guilty by nature. You've been born in sin, regardless of your own sins. But on top of that, we all have sinned. We just looked at that. We've all sinned and we've gathered sin and we've learned and earned sinning. We learn and practice that. But as soon as you're born, you have already inherited a sin, which needs redemption. So in God's eyes, you're guilty until proven righteous, which will get there. <clears throat> For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is Romans 6.23. Now, for the wages of sin is death. That was the law that God laid there and said, if you sin, you'll die. And that is it. And that death is a spiritual death that came to Adam. Adam died spiritually as soon as he sinned. Physically, he was still alive, but spiritually, he died. Although he paid the sacrifice, God actually sacrificed. We talk about that in a different video and covered their sin 
with the skin of the animal but that was covering and that wasn't removal of their sins but before Christ came the law was that you would have a sacrifice an animal sacrifice because like we said without shedding of the blood there is no redemption of sins there is no redemption so the way we had to do it before Christ came was that we had to present a bull or a goat or a lamb sacrifice to the temple by the high priest, not ourselves. We weren't even allowed to talk about God or mention God's name or pray directly to God. We couldn't do that. We had to go through the high priest and that only once a year. But after Christ, Christ death and resurrection gave us that access that because of that sacrifice we can be redeemed if we receive the gift the free gift of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ we can access God and in fact we can call God Father and in fact the Bible says Abba we can call him Abba Father and Abba literally means Daddy we can call God Daddy only through the blood of Jesus before that or without that you're not even supposed to even speak or mention the word God or, or talk to God you're not you're not acceptable but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us. We were still sinners and God loved us so much to die for us. Christ, his own son, his only son died for us as a sacrifice, as an atoning, substitutionary sacrifice instead of us. He released us just like Barabbas. He freed us, he set us free from condemnation. From death from the penalty of sin and he released us on top of that he gave us the access to the Father Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us only through the blood of Jesus but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become God's children to those who believe in his name isn't that wonderful only believing in his name gives you the right to become his children God's children now you are a child of God think about that a second ago you were guilty and condemned to death spiritually in God's eyes now after you receive the Christ you're suddenly, in God's eyes, a child of God. You're washed and cleansed with the blood of Jesus. Because he took our guilt and nailed it to the cross. He died the penalty of death for our sins. It was God's substitutionary atoning sacrifice for us. And if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9 to 10. But you have to believe it in your heart. This is not a matter of lip service. You have to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth to be saved. When you confess, it is a commitment. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us the sins and to cleanse us. 
from all unrighteousness. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Again, another scripture. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Think about that. You just call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. You're cleansed. You're washed as white as snow. Your sins have gone away. They're not just covered like the Old Testament, like before Christ, where the sin was covered by the blood of the lamb or a goat or a bull, but it's completely removed. You're now in the sight of God. You are a child of God. You're just as good as Jesus. You're, you, you're, you're here. You're co here with Christ, in fact, the Bible says. We read that in Galatians chapter 3, 26 to 29. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew, no Greek. There is neither slave, no free man. There is neither male, no female. For you are all one in Christ, Jesus Christ. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to promise. Can you see that you have come a journey from feeling guilty and being condemned, not necessarily feeling guilty, sometimes you don't feel guilty at all because like I said, you know, we think we are wonderful, we think we are such great people that we've, that there's never, the, the earth, the world has never seen anybody as wonderful as us. But according to God's standard, in God's eyes, in God's sight, we are all guilty because we've all fallen short of the glory of God and we've all sinned one way or the other and this is why we need a savior I give you another scripture in Revelation where Jesus is talking to John and his vision and he is saying behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. You are watching this video and this video is Jesus knocking on your door. Open the door. You're not watching this video by chance. It's not a coincidence. This message is Jesus knocking on your door. Will you open the door and invite him? So he can dine with you and you with him. If you will, I would like you to bow down in respect and close your eyes and pray this simple prayer with me and receive the free gift of salvation and be saved and have the assurance, have the assurance that you are saved and you're going to heaven and receive the Holy Spirit who will guide you and lead you. Jesus says you won't need any teachers after this. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, he will guide you. He will be your counselor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you in repentance. Remove this heart of stone and put a heart of flesh in me. Forgive all my sins. Sins that I know I've committed and the sins that I might have committed in ignorance. Forgive me of all my sins and the sins of my forefathers that's been passed down to me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus Christ and cleanse me as white as snow. Fill me and anoint me with your Holy Spirit. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior 
and that he died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. Thank you God for saving me. Thank you God for saving me. Thank you Jesus for your atoning sacrifice, for your blood that you shed to redeem me from sin and the punishment of sin. Hallelujah, glory to God. You're saved, you're not only saved, you're a child of God and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ promised to all who believed in him. Now, listen to this one. This is your day of salvation. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Think about that. The first day of the rest of your life with Jesus living in you. Now it's Jesus living your life, not you living your life. This is why we say it's a commitment. Because it's Jesus, you're allowing Jesus to live for you. The same way that he died for you, for your sinner man, sinner woman, sinner person in you and substituted that and set you free. Now you're allowing him to live in you. And you're living your life, the rest of your life for him. For he says, at an acceptable time, I listened to you in a day of salvation. I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. i read that passage again. You are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor freeman. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. And heirs according to promise. You are Christ, you belong to Christ and you are Abraham's offspring. There's no Jew, no Greek, no difference. Everybody is the same. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any question, please don't hesitate. Please send us a message or comment on the video and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you've received the free gift of salvation by faith and you said this short little prayer which is the best ever prayer you've ever done in your life because this will change your life. This is a life-changing prayer. Anything else, it might affect your life. All the other prayers will affect your life in one way or the other but this is a life-changing prayer. This is about life and death, spiritual life and death situation. This prayer was to save you, your soul. Your spirit will live forever and you will go to heaven. And your place after this world will be in heaven. It's a guarantee. It's not a myth. It's not a counterfeit. It's guaranteed. And the guarantee we have is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee for what is to come. And you will know that you have received the Holy Spirit. Just as a pregnant woman knows she's pregnant, you will know that you have received the Holy Spirit. You don't have to prove it to anyone. Nobody has to convince you that you have the Holy Spirit in you. You will know, and only you will know, that you have the Holy Spirit. And others might or might not be able to tell, but it is for you to know that. And you know that you know. If you've said this life-changing prayer, 
we would appreciate if you could send us a message and let us know so we can rejoice with you in the fact that you are saved. Angels celebrate and rejoice. Angels rejoice when one sinner comes to salvation, according to the scriptures. And we would like to celebrate and rejoice with you if you let us know that you have said this prayer and you have received the free gift of salvation through faith in Christ. Thank you very much and may God richly bless you.